You know, it seems like a really simple thing to talk about, but it's not really all that simple. What is ownership? What is it? And that's a really good question. And that's what we're going to talk about today on today on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. Hello, I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Uh, today is Saturday, the 12th of December of 2020. And I'm glad to have you aboard, whether you're coming on on Rumble, on the podcast, or on YouTube. Welcome. The subject, as I say, of today's little talk is going to be ownership. And I wanted to start by saying something that I think a lot of people do not consider. Ownership does not begin outside of oneself. You may be going, what on earth are you talking about? Imagine if you were a slave. And there are people out there who still are, and so I'm not, I know that they might not have to imagine, right? But my point is to say, imagine that you were a slave if you're not one. Do you own yourself? Well, technically, the answer to that is absolutely. You absolutely do own yourself. But the reality is that somebody else is expressing ownership of your person when you find yourself in slavery. And you can sort of make the argument for work. It's a little bit less of an argument because typically you volunteer. volunteer you actually, whether you like it or not, you actually say, oh, I'm going to go to work for these people and they're going to pay me to do what I do. But when you're in a situation where you can be killed or punished or, or you know, uh, imprisoned, whatever it happens to be, if you don't abide by the terms of some slavish type of, an, uh, of a thing, you don't even own yourself. And this is an important realization. When you think, <clears throat> when you make the, when you express the idea that ownership is a bad thing, what do you do about the idea that you uh, own yourself or, or don't, as the case may be? What do you do about that? Right? That's an important consideration, and it's a first consideration, and we move out from there to things that people don't think about, I, I don't think largely either. You got a can of beans in the cabinet, you got a loaf of bread in the bread box if you use a bread box like me, got a, a, a jug of milk in the refrigerator. These are things you own, right, or we assume that you own them, we assume that you bought them or whatever. You may have gotten them through some other mechanism, but the fact is they're in your house and anybody else claiming ownership of them is probably kind of a hard thing to do. But if somebody else, so you get out of the workplace, for example, and somebody puts a jug of milk in the workplace, well, that's their milk, not yours. And for you to take it without asking, unless they've specifically expressly permitted you to do so, is kind of wrong, kind of bad, right? So there's that ownership. And then you step out into sort of farther things things that are farther out. Let's talk about cars. Uh, let's talk about furniture that you're either re renting or leasing or whatever, rent to own, whatever it happens to be, and various kinds of equipment, computers and things. Well, the first thing that you have to understand is technically until you pay for those things, the owners of those things are the people from whom you are uh, leasing, renting, whatever those things. So if the entity self-leases, self-rents, then that entity owns that thing until you're done paying for it if it's a if it's a rent or lease to own situation. And otherwise, they just own it. It's just theirs. And you may not like that idea, and you may consider that uh, being them being leeches or whatever, as Tim Poole pointed out, that people have said about, uh, so for example, people who rent properties to folks. <clears throat> but the idea is, that those people bear the burden for getting those things, for off, oftentimes delivering them it, or put, allowing people to be in them. And as, as Tim points out, uh, doing things like um, making sure that the lights stay on and the pipes, burst pipes get fixed and roofs get fixed and water heaters get replaced and all the various things that you have to do if you're the owner of a piece of uh, property that somebody else lives in as a rental or a lease or however that works, right? So the idea is when you start talking about ownership rights, one of the other things that you have to start talking about is ownership responsibilities, right? Along with uh, authority in that particular instance, as I've said many times, and we'll say again many more, I'm quite sure, come responsibilities. You're responsible for things that happen on those properties. And the point is that those people doing the things that they're doing to try and, and, and make it so that you have a place to live, 
You can argue that they're leeches. I would argue quite the opposite. In fact, they're public servants in a sense because they're making it possible for that property to be there for your use. Now, I am nothing like a fan of predatory lending. I'm nothing like a fan of, of uh, harsh repossession techniques, uh, though I understand them to, to some degree from an ownership perspective, right? Uh, one thing I want to point out, and this is important, right? Again, uh, Mr. Poole points this out, and he's correct in this. The fact of the matter is, I am a, quote, homeowner, but I'm really not, because the bank owns my house right now, okay? And until I'm finished paying for it, the bank continues to own it. And so when he talked about an individual who, or a family, whatever, who, uh, you know, took out a second mortgage or an, an additional mortgage or whatever after they paid off the property and then wasn't able to pay it back. Well, the fact is what you really did was, as, as he points out, as Mr. Poole points out, you sold your property to someone with the idea that you were going to buy it back. That's what happened, right? <clears throat> I don't really like that way of doing business and given the opportunity I will never do business that way and I consider it generally not always but generally what's the word I want uh, it's not expedient it's not a good idea to do things like that it's just not a good idea you shouldn't do that but the point that you have to keep in mind is whether you're renting your sofa or your computer <clears throat> or your uh, buying your house through a mortgage or you're buying your car through a loan. What you need to understand is somebody else owns that car. And here's the funny part. If an entity self-finances, finances in-house, as they like to say, then they're the owner still of that thing that you're financing. If, on the other hand, you get a loan through somebody else, technically the owner is the bank through which you're doing that loan. <coughs> Excuse me. And the point of all of this is that ownership, you may not think ownership makes sense, but the reality is if somebody can walk into your house and take that jug of milk or that loaf of bread, if somebody can walk up to the front of your house and, and, and take your car that's parked out front, if somebody can walk into your house and throw you out of the house that you've, you know, you actually have finished paying for, then you're going to really realize that ownership is an important thing. And like I say, the, the most important form of ownership, as far as I'm concerned, is ownership of self, right? That's a very important consideration and realization. If you say that people can't own anything, that that's an unreasonable thing, then why can't I enslave you again? I'm just curious because I'm having a hard time coming up with reasons. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not intending on enslaving anybody. I don't have that as a... As a idea or a thing that I want to do. And I'm not trying to say that people should do that. And I'm not saying that it's right. In fact, that's part of my pitch is that I'm saying, look, if you're, if you don't own yourself, then other people can own you. And that's bad, right? <clears throat> so, so I want you to understand that, <clears throat> right? And so the thing is, if you, if you have a, if you have a problem with ownership, at least you have to make some sort of separation in your mind in terms of what people can and should own and what they can't and shouldn't. <clears throat> in my mind, I have a hard time coming up with that, except when it comes to things like other people. And I think, right, in that sense, I think you can make an argument against ownership, right? You can, you can say if somebody tries to own somebody else, that's not something that they should be allowed to do, right, as a rule. That's not a good thing. It's not a proper thing, and they shouldn't be allowed to do that. But in general, I think and where you draw the line is really important. I don't think anybody can honestly make an argument against ownership. This is what I would say. I don't think anybody can really make that argument. But I do believe people can and should make arguments against ownership of things, for example, like other people. That's really wrong. I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it's not. Uh, you, you don't own them, right? You don't own them. And that's just reality. So this is sort of what I'm trying to, to get across today, is ownership is a necessary thing. It's a necessary thing. Where does it start? Well, I would argue with yourself, and then I would say little things, and then I would say lots of bigger things are things that you ought to be able to own. Where does it end? I would say for me, it ends where you're trying to take possession of some other person, right? That's what I would say. 
All right, I need to wrap up today, and I hope you're having a good day today, being Saturday the 12th of December of 2020. As I've said, that means tomorrow will be Sunday the 13th of December of 2020. And I hope you're having a good weekend so far, and I'm going to go ahead and try and get another daily summation out um, when I can do that, which most likely will be tomorrow. And uh, I just wanted to say I hope you're, as I say, doing well, and I hope I will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Saturday the 12th of December of 2020. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well, I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an s dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the daily summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.